This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Currently. Oh my goodness, it feels like we haven't been here in forever. It's uh, it's me, Daniel Kuzer, and I'm with this guy, Christopher Wright. I only do podcasts with him. Chris, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> hey, man, it, it feels like it's been so long. Like these these two week episodes are kind of. Like I don't know you anymore. I got a text you every now and again. Apparently, you know that's just fine, and it's uh, it's it's perfect because we're like, oh, you know, let let the news kind of compile a little bit, and then we'll come in and we'll hit it all. Well, it's been compiling. <laughs> it has been doing stuff, and uh, I guess it's time to talk about it. <laughs> you get what you ask for, right? Like it's been quite a bit, man. There's some fun things to talk about. There's some like wild speculation to talk about maybe some people are upset about certain things happy about other things um we're gonna get into it all but uh in the meantime if you guys have yet to do so leave us those five star ratings and reviews on apple podcast as well as spotify if you listen over there um helps people find the pod and uh lets us know where we're loved and that, that feels nice and fuzzy so dude let's hop right in man where do where, where do you want to start you, you you lead it where do you want to where do you want to start you know, right before some recent news that broke about 15 minutes ago, I was pretty upset, right? Oh, I, you know, you know, taking a look at the whole expansion draft, I was pissed, right? Like, I don't like the, I don't like the trade for protection with Utah, giving up Del Fava and a fourth round pick. We'll talk about that in a second. But as I was fuming, getting ready to hop on the podcast today, my heart got a little positivity. Um, Izzy Rodriguez re-signed with the current for a two-year contract through 2025. Our very versatile left back, who I think is a foundational piece. I think the world of her is a player, and I'm very happy that she re-signed because without her as a left back on our team, we have to go find one, and I don't like that. Look, uh, in no way is she a veteran defender, but also in no way is she like, a young, like right out of high school, college defender, you know, she, yeah, she's good. And in fact, so good that I sometimes forget she's a defender (laughs) because of how much she, she spins up there in the midfield and even in the attack for God's sake. So she's a lot of fun to watch. I I think we're excited to have her back. I think she's like third, third or fourth in goals this year or this past year as a left back. And like Mm -hmm. you said, she's a, she's an absolute workhorse. I mean, she's all up and down that left side. I mean, well, I mean, the amount of effort she puts into to her position is incredible. Well, it's wonderful, right? I mean, she she is a young defender, right? I mean, she's not a rookie is what I meant earlier. But right. uh, uh, fourth round pick out of the draft last year, uh, 2022, that is. So has played two seasons. And uh, this is probably, I don't know, probably feels good, man. She says, I'm extremely excited and grateful to be staying with the current and getting to play for this club in this city once again. I can't wait to get back to work with the group and compete for a championship. So that 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 com- that competing she mentions preseason camp can start January twenty second, bro. That's like a month away. That's wild. And I was worried, man. We had two expansion teams, right? Loetta left. She could have gone to so many other places, and and you don't know if if Vladko and Cami want to bring her back i know we extended it offer but you don't know what that offer looks like right they could say they extended it offer they could have load balled her i obviously we won't know but you just kind of never know a lot of variables thrown in the mix there and uh thankfully she she's coming back yeah totally uh i'm i'm excited for it for sure man um so there's that i mean is rodriguez coming back as you alluded to kate del fava is taking her services back to uh Mormon land in uh, Utah is that that's not meant to be insensitive that's just it is what it is everyone knows that uh Utah Royals man you see she, we we drafted it for uh protection and a little bit of money how do we how do we feel about that I mean it was only we only get 75 grand in allocation funds and we gave them Kate Del Fava and our first round pick man in the draft are we mad with this Highway robbery. I'm there pissed. it is. He's I'm pissed. absolutely upset. And there's nobody that I've really seen that feels good about it, right? Like, don't get me wrong. It's great to have protection. We can control the players we retain, you know, by releasing a protected list. 
it can probably hurt some feelings when you think about it, right? Like you can only protect what nine plus one. So we were able to to retain who we wanted to, not hurt any feelings, but a fourth overall pick, man. And the thing about the NWSL, it's really hard to judge the value of picks because every team values them differently. In other major sports, you know, NFL, NBA, like there's kind of a industry standard as to what these cost. But the NWSL is the wild, wild west of of value for picks. So either we didn't value our pick highly, maybe they were looking at this draft and didn't like what they saw in the first round. Maybe they didn't think some of these players would be better than, you know, keeping the two players that probably would have been been taken uh, in the expansion draft. I'm I'm just irritated with it, man. I yeah, I, we we got raked over the coals. We really it did. Feels, it feels weird. Uh, even worse is when you, uh, uh, you know, looking at the our players that like comment on her Instagram posts yeah. about leaving and whatnot and. Uh, you know, Desiree Scott said quite a bit on there, you know, sending you all the positive energy, new chapter, whatever. Uh, Michelle Cooper says, stop, I'm sobbing, you know. But uh, Loera <laughs> said, stoked for you, my girl. Bigger things ahead. And I'm like, I, is that a little shade? I mean, we could we could over-speculate there and uh, think differently because, you know, of all the rumors around the club and how we, you know, how the club, how, you know, how they, they treat their personnel. Right, there's just been so many different rumors, and we don't know anything. We just speculate on this show. That's what we love to do. But we didn't get shit for this trade, man. Just protection and and a little bit of money. And so I start thinking, okay, are we just trying to clear some space? Maybe bigger. We got some big guns coming in, some bigger pieces. I believe it when I see it. Yeah, and, and there's a couple additional pieces. I mean, the fir- the fourth overall pick was probably going to get paid fairly well for a rookie, right? Um, they're going to agree to a contract. To my knowledge, it's not like, you know, the NFL, where you, you know, where you're drafted has, you know, a kind of set pay in a way or a range. Yeah. Um, to my knowledge, that's not the way it is with the NWSL draft. So, and on top of that, look, we have a lot of players on our team, right? Like if we're going to bring in some other players, we're going to have to, you know, losing that draft pick, might allow us to bring in somebody else. So we can only fit so many players on the team. True. Um, but Del Fava, man, she's played every single regular season game the last two years, Whoa. considering how much considering how much uh, our team has been injured this past year. And on top of that, in last year in 2022, she was fifth in minutes played. And then this past year, she played the most minutes on our team. Yeah, I mean, she yeah. appeared in every regular season match over the past two seasons. That is, what a workhorse. That's crazy. And to keep herself healthy. 24. Like, yeah, we talked about Izzy. Del Fava is essentially a young veteran. <laughs> right. You know, and that's well, a great the, piece to... The Royals drafted her. The Utah Royals, they drafted her in the first place. So, they did. I mean, I can't imagine what it feels like to, like, I don't know. I, I'm a creature of habit, and I hate change, bro. If you throw me a curveball, I'm like, shit, I wasn't ready. And so I know if I'm trying to get my mind right to to up my life and move to Utah, and then all of a sudden, boom, that team's no more, and I'm actually going way central to Kansas City, and then I'm going back to Utah, like, life's crazy, man. That <laughs> would feel weird to me. Yeah. I mean, You're kind of a kind nomad, of... though. I'm, ta- I'm talking to the nomad over here who would just go with a backpack around Europe. All he needs is a backpack and a sink to shower in. <laughs> <laughs> Bucket with a sponge, right? Oh, my God. Um, Splash me a little bit. Give me a little spritz. <laughs> I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I had a feeling that it was going to be Ball, Ham- Hamilton, or Del Favo. I felt like we were going to lose two of those three. Expansion teams love to draft defenders to start out, right? Um, well, yeah, it, we had you mentioned funny you mentioned Ball and Hamilton. If y'all need a house, they're uh real estate agents now, realtor to just, the stars, realtor <laughs> to the stars as bananas. <laughs> That's um, good for them, but yeah, man, I, I'm just bummed. Uh, salt in the wound with that fourth round pick. So, 
Chris Henderson, the draft guru we had on last year, he had right. Del Pava, who was his fourth right back on his uh, his board, and the fourth pick in the draft is absolute highway robbery. That's what he he called it. Uh, wow. By far the best move of the off season so far by a team. So I feel like we just got screwed there. I don't know how those negotiations kind of happened. I would like to know, but what's done is done. Yeah. I mean, we can't bitch about it anymore. It's done. But I want to give you some quick context here. Um, some quick context on that, on trades for protection. Utah Royals, um, they got 90,000. I'm sorry, they they gave up. I'm sorry, they received 90000 and Michaela Clough and a second round pick for protection. Uh, 60K in protection um, to the way for uh, Kayla Real. And then for Washington Spirit, Utah Royals gave their protection for the 20th and 21st overall pick. So just by looking at that, we're the outlier. We gave yeah. up so much for protection. So I. Dude, I don't know. I, I wish I was in on negotiations sometimes. I'd love to be just, I don't know if I want to be part of it, but just to kind of listen, just kind of sit in and be like, like, did we, was it bad business? Did we offer all this? And they were just like, sure. <laughs> or did they ask for this? You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. There could have been a situation where we were like, you know, Del Fava in the, the second, our second round pick. And they're like, no, nope, we're standing firm. It's either the fourth overall or there's no agreement. We don't know, but the fourth overall, that could be an impact player in a couple of years. We don't know. Getting rid of your early draft pick shows, I mean, what it leads one to believe that you're going to build this team around some veterans. And it's it's a more of a win now mentality than uh, uh, get some youngins in there and build to win later. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I let's I believe in when I see it though. You know, we we don't know. And we might not know till after Christmas and and more close to the season, but it sure does feel like maybe we're gearing up to uh, make a bit of a bit of a splash. The current love splashes, so I, they do, they do. It could be, I don't know, I I don't know where it goes from there. I mean, maybe it's a uh, maybe it's a Sam Kerr situation. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just throwing names out. A, a, a Swanson and a Sonnet type situation. Who knows, man? But Wouldn't that be nuts. Put that on a billboard. I'm just, you might I, sell I, out the stadium. Hey, oh, there's a transition for you. Transition too late, too late, baby, because it is sold out, man. They they said that uh, season tickets for 2024 are sold out. Now I'm sure they cap that right, so they can still have some available for people that want to come to games. Right? We're gonna have 2,000 available seats for single matches. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, in a in a stadium that seats. 11,500. 11, okay. Well, that's cool, man. So 9,500 season ticket holders. And and we're in. We're in on the ground level. But Founders Club, you and me, we're founders. Seems like uh, the current forgot about that, but we didn't. It's good. We did not forget. It's going to be great, man. We are, uh, I, I'm getting excited. It's like when you're in these winter blues eras, you know, you're spending a lot of money on Christmas gifts. Uh, home renovation over here. It's been a very expensive month. But, uh, and, and then you're like, wait, soccer starts up not that far away. It's pretty badass. Did you see the pictures of the stadium recently? They have current, like in, you know, in the seats, kind of like sporting. They have the uh, I drove out. by the stadium a week ago oh. and it was great. Like we, we throw, drove across that bridge to go to North KC and you just see it. And I was like, there's our seats. I can see them. <laughs> I know where we're sitting. <laughs> oh, it was cool, man. We we had a little date day in Kansas City. A little little nice. day date up in on uh, a Sunday. Nice. Get some good food. Yeah. Hit a hit a vegan spot. Escape room. You know all the good stuff. Nice. Two escape rooms. Honestly, we're we're addicts. We have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's uh uh. Well, that's awesome about the uh sellout for season tickets. So we got more stuff to talk about. But let's uh let's take a quick break and we'll continue when we return. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. 
Yo, yo. Dude. We, uh, I feel like I don't talk to you anymore. It's just weird. We, we just, uh, need to, need to, need to see you. Get a big hug next time. <laughs> we'll get some food. It's been, been a bit, man. Uh, I tell you, are you doing all right? You're getting geared up for holidays and whatnot? I am. Yeah. Everything's yeah. going well. Do you ever make a little wish list on Amazon or you kind of just buy yourself your own gift? We usually just do a couple things that we kind of save for the other to buy because we're adults. We get stuff when we want it. Um, yeah, exactly. But yeah, we'll, we'll save something for, for each other to, to get each other. I always have a problem because I'm like, well, I can't, I can't put this on my list because it's on sale now. Like, I, I don't want them to pay full price for this item I want. Why wouldn't you buy, you know, pay it? I'll get it myself. I'll just get it myself. <laughs> That's what I do with video games, man. It's Black Friday. And I'm like, All right, I'm going to buy right now. So, bought a, bought a popcorn machine for the basement. Did I tell you that? Oh, we talked about it one time. I didn't know you actually oh, pulled the trigger. Machine. Yeah, it's dope. Has to have you over for movie night. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, Hey, where are we going? Uh, t- Kind of working... We were kind of working backwards, but I kind of want to go to what hit after um, we recorded last. So, you know, University of Kansas Health System is our official health care provider. Did we, uh, we talked about that last time, right? We did. Yep. And what was the last Teal Tuesday we talked about? Was it Martin City Brewing or did we, uh, we didn't talk about that yet? It was Martin City. So we got two to talk about. Room 39, I think. Uh... Okay. Room 39. There it is. Uh, what do you know about Room 39? Anything? I don't know anything, but I know I'm excited to try it. I haven't heard of it, uh, but you know, supposedly they, they've... they Dude, they just keep adding these uh, well-known places that have, like, chefs attached to them. Yeah. Places with chefs. Awards. Uh, Three-time awards. Yeah. Semi-finalist for James Beard Outstanding Chef Award. Uh, man. It's he previously created culinary delights as chef of Cafe Allegro, which was consistently named number one restaurant in KC by the Z- Zagat survey. Is that how you say that? Zagat, I believe so. And that's kind of a big deal. I mean, if you see someone has been mentioned in Zagat, that's it, pretty good. So, uh, what do they offer here? What do we got? Like local, uh, local, uh, uh farm, farm stuff. What do we got? Farm to table. It doesn't really say anything, does it? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I this is one of the first ones that didn't give us, uh, you know, hints at what they're going to be serving. So, but we do know uh, what was just released yesterday. Oh, oh, Lord, Lord, yeah, oh, Lord, yeah. What? Uh, I mean, it's been a long time. That's been le- that's been gone from sporting for a bit. As they've I'm asked to have back. I'm glad to see it came back. This is nice. I mean, it's a good partnership. You kind of assumed this would, ma- like, you could think this might happen because they have a, uh, they have a whole teal rising beer, yeah. right? Um, I'm not not much of a beer guy, but I, I when I was, Boulevard was a big old, big old uh, uh, circulation in my in my diet, so it was. <laughs> It's gonna be cool, man, just to have Boulevard there because they're just a staple of that downtown community. Yeah, I mean they're local, and I do like their. I don't drink much, but their Teal Rising, I do like it. I know a lot of people do as well, so I imagine that's gonna be flowing pretty freely in that stadium. I can imagine. Um, that's awesome, man. CPKC Stadium continues to grow. Um, I just love it. You know, one thing we did not speak about. And uh, we should really have this man's brother on the podcast sometime and talk about this team. But the the Grant Wall press box, his brother being Eric Wall, um, I know he follows us online, and maybe maybe we'll talk to him see if he wants to come on come on and talk to me. Talker, good man, yeah. love it. But but he was there in attendance, man. As the Longs, Chris and Angie Long, uh, dedicated this press box in his brother Grant's name. Who, if you live under a rock. Um, passed away in uh, in in Qatar last year. So it's been ju- it's been right about a year, right, since he's been gone. Yeah, and, and the way that the Long speak about him, they've made it pretty clear we wouldn't have a KC Current without you know Grant's influence with the Long. So there's a good chance we wouldn't. Um, yeah, I mean, and, yeah, he had KC roots, right? 
Yeah, yeah. And what he's contributed to, to women's soccer, he was well ahead of his time and he was pushing this journalism forward um, for, for women's sports, probably more so than anybody. So um, it, it's a great tribute. It's a great tribute. And um, yeah, love to have Eric on to, to talk about him. At some yeah. I read this that uh, Grant initially met Angie at Shawnee Mission East, which is just wild, and Chris at Princeton. You know, and I'm like, did this man just play uh, a matchmaker? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of wild. But she uh, does you too, and then just like fade into the background. <laughs> yeah. You know, but he did a ton of stuff for Sports Illustrated. Uh, Planet Football was a, a podcast I believe he did. Um, you know, continue to cover the national teams for Fox Sports, CBS Sports, many other different outlets. Uh, here's something that was cool that I read, man, just during his career. And the man was by no means an, an older man. Like, he he covered eight men's World Cups, four women's World Cups, and five Olympic tournaments. It's awesome. So there will be a custom jersey and a memorial seat in the press box at every home match. It's needable. Dry your tears. Anyways, um, moving on. Official jeweler. Hey, you want some diamonds? Get your Hellsberg Hellsberg diamond. Uh, what does that partnership even... Uh, I see there's some signage, co-branded. Uh, I am love buttons and whatnot. But if I if I can get some teal diamonds in my wedding ring, listen, listen here. Ooh. Wouldn't that be bananas? Yeah, like... Like I said, they're going to have some giveaways, some on-the-field contests to celebrate theme nights at the stadium. Um, the It includes includes digital signage and limited edition designs for the I Am Loved buttons. Um, and on top of that, they're going to team up for a new celebration each current home game. The 75th minute will be recognized as the Hullsburg Diamonds Diamond Minute. Um a nod to their 75th diamond anniversary. Don't exactly know what that's going to be all about. I don't either. We'll find out together. But I'm here for it. Yep. Sounds fun. Uh, s- sticking with the um, partnerships, we part Casey Curran partnered with Samsung. They just keep getting the big hitters, dude. Like, they're not just, I, I don't know. What, what they're I just... Want- I mean, they're doing the big hitters on like the nat- like the big type of brands, but anything that can be local, they're doing local. Exactly. You got local stuff, and then Samsung is not local, but humongous. So At their whole so- solar panel energy um, setup was done by a local company. Uh, you know, they, they brought in local consultants for, um, oh gosh, like, all the sustainability aspects for the new stadium. Uh, Hellsburg is local. Like I said, every single like food option is local. So where they can, they're keeping everything within the community and uh, going for a big national player with Samsung. So I love it. Yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, Samsung's displays are, are in SoFi Stadium, for God's sakes. Um, Chase Center, City Field. It's just, it's a big, it's a big deal. And now CPKC Stadium. So I, I dig it. And, you know, these are outdoor LED panels, right? And anyone who has a Samsung TV is probably a Samsung fan. Yeah. What do you have? What do you have at all? We have Samsung. There you go. Yeah. I, I thought you might. Um, I've had Samsung before, but I, I know you want a good TV, man, good screen, Samsung, LG, like right up there together, right? Absolutely. So, cool. Welcome, Samsung. Uh, Dude, so... What's this uh, st- STEM lab? Do we need to talk about the STEM lab? Uh, it looks like they had given students access to 3D printers, laptops, other tech um, at East High School. Yeah, Current and East High School opened up a new STEM lab for students as part of their multi-year commitment to building out STEM programming in partnership with CPKC and Bank of America. Yeah, like I said, uh, the classroom will allow students to have access to 3D printers, laptops, and other technology to advance their skills in science, technology, engineering, and math. So, pretty wild. They, Fantastic. They, you know, that there were some players on hand uh, hanging out too. I, it looks like Elizabeth Ball, Kristen Hamilton, CeCe Kaiser, Lola Bonta, Haley Mace, and Mallory Weber. 
which is kind of neat, man. That means these women are, you know, they're hanging around town. They didn't uh, go home for the winter or go on a big vacation or something. They're, they're staying, you know, really immersed in this community, right? I found it kind of interesting that Mallory Weber is technically not under contract, but she's been doing like signings with, with Mace. She's doing, yeah. she's doing, uh, oh gosh, on the Teal Tuesdays, like she's with Mace and they're, they're eating the food and talking with the owners. So kind of unusual, but that's unusual, but I... that kind of alludes to her staying around. I could see the current kind of letting her see her options and then, you know, there could be a path, path back. We haven't seen her play in a while. Um, I mean, if we can bring her back, I would like to, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah. But it's cool that she's able to do that. And it's cool that these owners who are having these uh, restaurants inside the stadium, you know, get to to work with some of the players. And it makes me jealous when I see them eating all that good food. Well, and contracts do go till the end of the year. So, I mean, yeah. if she was asked to do something, she kind of doesn't have a choice. <laughs> Yes yeah. and no. I mean, you can you could probably say no, but it just kind of shows you that she cares, and maybe maybe they keep her around. So that's interesting. Good, good, good point. Yeah. Um, NWSL announced the 2024 schedule footprint and the competition calendar, man. So let's break this down because we got an expanded first thing. We got an expanded playoff format. There are no buys. Everyone, I mean. They, Top eight teams make the playoffs, and boom, quarterfinals are off and running. There's no buy to get to the semis, you know, no no easy path to the semis. So, I think that's cool. So the only you know the only reason you're jonesing for the top seed is home field advantage. Like that's the main reason because you're not going to get that buy. So there's that. And a quick note on that the the tournament with the champion, the playoff winner is going to play the Shield winner as well. So, and I imagine there's going to be a financial incentive in there, kind of replacing the Challenge Cup or, you know, they're... it's kind I of got... weird. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but... Uh... I got qualms with that. <laughs> Let me tell you my beef. Cause, Give me uh, your qualms. I... Well, don't say it's... I mean, they. you're not saying it. They said it's replacing the Challenge Cup. And I was like, no, the F, it's not. Uh, it's not the same thing. You're it's just having some one-off... Cup. Yeah, you're having some one-off game. Uh, it's like the, I mean, you might as well, see, like the Champions Cup. Do you remember in 2014, Sporting played Man City because they both won the 2013, like, league? I was there. there. I was there when they played. I was there, too. I, I didn't know you, but uh, I was there. And I was just like, I don't know what this is, but it felt so silly, and they didn't play there. I don't know. But this is going to be part of, isn't it going to be part of the season? Like this match will count towards their win loss record. That I am not sure. That's a really good question. I, they're gonna they're gonna play on March fifteenth, and the season kicks off March sixteenth. So I I'm not sure if it's going to be part of this season, but I think there's a financial incentive tied to it. I don't know. It's just not the same thing. It's, don't take away a competition, a tournament, and then replace it with this silly little game. That you know we're now getting less. We're getting less soccer games. So I don't know, like, how are you advancing the league when you're taking something away? Well, we are, overall, you're absolutely right. Um, each team will play 26 games. Um, and is that more than, that's, that's more than we did. It's four more than what we played this past year, which was 22. Okay, so you're. it's still less games than if you had a Challenge Cup. You know what I mean? I like the Domestic Cup. I don't know. I'm a fan of it. I'm a fan of a domestic cup. Sure. It, it allows, it allows you know, your draft picks, younger players. It allows you to try different, like, tactical things. I don't know. I, I'm a fan of it, and I'm kind of bummed to see it go. Yeah, I, I agree, man. It's, uh, I don't know, more matches, though, in the regular season, so that's kind of cool. Um, dude, you got, but you got games. We've talked about this. Games are going to be on, uh, uh, Prime Video, you know, Friday night matches are on Prime Video. Saturday night has a double header on Scripps's owned Ion Network, right? Right. Then you're going to have a package of matches on the CBS Television Network on Paramount Plus. Um, 
additional matches on CBS Sports Network. Uh, ESPN will air a package of matches across ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN Deportes. Um, I dig it, man. I dig this. I, I, I love that Prime Video is getting into the mix. You know, they've, they've dabbled in live sports a little bit with the NFL and all that and a little NBA action or WNBA action. Um, so, but it's, it's, things are gearing up. Things are taking, taking shape. And did you see, uh, that the new schedule will avoid having any NWSL matches during the FIFA window? I think I scrolled right past that, but I think you're right. Yeah. That's and pretty dope. I love I love it. I'm sure the players are thrilled as well. And the sure. league will have a, you know, a CBA mandated break from July 8th to July 14th. And the NWSL will take a break for the Olympics from July 15th to August 18th. And I love this part. In that break, the league will host a competition with NWSL teams and other international teams. So a fun tournament with other international teams to kind of spice up this season. I'm, I'm reacting in real time right now because I did not read that. Okay. I'm being honest with you. So we are going to have an in-season tournament similar to the Challenge Cup. It's not going to be a domestic, but it will right. have, yeah. But international teams, I love international teams. I love watching them play. And you know the NWSL is going to try and show off their crown jewel of a stadium here in Kansas City. So sure. I would expect we're going to get some hot... Yeah, I don't know what international teams, but the highest in terms of name value, I imagine they'll probably be like LA, but you know they're going to come to Kansas City. Yeah. I would think. Like, I want to show it man. off. Yeah. You you could see clubs, you know, from, from Mexico again. You could see uh, even English clubs, like a Chelsea or something. Like it's... Wow, because it'd be it'd be a friendly for them, essentially, because it's at, it's out of their season, right? Because they take the summers off, so it would uh, that'd be interesting. I'm excited. Wow, I am very embarrassed that I just overlooked that. Uh, I didn't read the whole freaking release, so that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, and I hope the league in, in this tournament they have merchandise. I'm a sucker for international, like like you know when sporting would play you know, an inter international team like Man City, they always had some type of scarf or merchandise to commemorate the, the tournament. Bring it to me because I will buy quite a bit of stuff. I'm a, I'm a fan of the the co-branding, man. Yeah. I'm looking right now at a, an Angel City and uh, Mexican women's national team I uh, scarf that I have or the or the Sporting St. Louis co-branded one over there. It's I love stuff like that. <laughs> so, but. And I hope they continue to, to do an international tournament, man. It just... It grows our league. It, it gets us visibility in other markets, other countries. So that's a great way to expand. Look, I want to uh, segue to our next segment, which we like to call, Where in the World is Matt Potter? <laughs> uh, dude, Bay FC hired Matt Potter as technical director. You remember this guy? You remember him from early this year? <laughs> Took us to a championship and only had a couple regular season games. He did. Probably should have been. Uh, probably should have been coach of the year, but it is what it is. Um, and then was let go for no real like public reason. We don't really know. So tell us, Matt, what happened? Apparently, it was not enough to dissuade a women's owned soccer team. So True. we don't we don't know what it was about, but obviously. I imagine Bay FC did their due diligence on whatever whatever that issue was, and they felt like he was worth bringing in. Wouldn't you assume, like, in that situation that they call Casey Current and have a have a conversation? Like, hey, so what, you know, what went down? We're considering, you know, hiring this man. What happened? Well, I'm sure they have people, yeah, like I said, people they talked to. Loetta was obviously with the team when that happens they may have gotten her feedback we don't i don't even know if we'll ever know but you know probably not it is what it is yeah well that's cool man uh, uh good for him still he's back in the league and everything so um dude i want to mention one thing about uh dude there's a new docu-series on netflix 
It's uh, over the U.S. women's national team and their World Cup defeat. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do I want to watch that? Why do I want to live that again? Like, that sounds horrible. You don't do documentaries on on losing moments, right? You don't do that. You need, a, you need these feel-good moments. Um, I'm only an episode and a half in, but it's four little baby episodes, like 45 minutes or something. And it's neat, man. And if you, I'd say, if you're just a casual, you're not going to watch this. You're not going to care. But if you're a fan of the sport and you're a fan of these women, and if you're a fan of Casey Current, guess what? Our head coach plays a very large role in this docuseries as he was the coach of the national team in this World Cup. But it's cool, man, seeing them, like, really talk about trying to make the squad. You know, they're like, I, I just don't know. I mean, he said 4 o'clock. Will you, can you just call me and put me out of my misery already? And and then he starts FaceTiming her. Uh, I can't remember who it was. And he's like, she's like, oh, hi. And he's like, we'd like you to join, join us for the World Cup. And she's like, okay, thank you. You know, kind of crying. And I'm like, it means so much yeah. to do that. And they also NWSL takes a bright spot in this docuseries um, because all those women – Almost all of them played in the NWSL. It's just really cool, man. Yeah. And and I re- I'm curious to see because there's a you got a lot of criticism for how they, you know, they sure. played in, in the tournament. They talk about that. They talk about it, and they it's deserved, right? They're like we set these expectations and bars for ourselves. And I'm curious to see just kind of get an interview as to that whole process to get a, a look at our coach, and probably one of the most stressful jobs and, and stressful environments possible um so I, i'm excited for it I'll yeah definitely gonna check it out check it out let me know what you think so what uh what else man am i missing anything i got one more thing yeah so the 2024 nwsl full uh competition calendar is out um not to be confused uh-huh. with the schedule so completely separate thing the okay. primary transfer window is from january january 29th through april 22nd hit hit me with that when's when's the expansion draft by the way is that this week it's 15th yep friday oh friday shoot okay but yeah. doesn't matter to us we don't care we, we've already taken our lumps on that one we've already exactly made that sacrifice and it's going to be awfully painful looking at mock draft because i looked at a mock draft yesterday before the news hit and i was like look at the players like people are projecting you know to go to kansas city one of them was a forward um and I was just like getting excited thinking about a, a top player coming over, right? And then found out in one of the most brutal ways possible. Yeah, but not happen. Not happening. Um, so during the draft, it's gonna sting a little bit. Um, but what's done is done. But going back to the competition calendar, the primary transfer window is from January 29th through April 22nd. Um, so obviously start of the off season up to a little bit through the beginning of the season. And the second transfer window is August 1st through August 31st. So the whole month of August, we'll have a, a secondary transfer window. Um, Cool. The preseason roster um, is February 26th. That's when it has to be named. The final roster is due March 11th. And the roster freeze, and that's at the beginning of the year. And at the end of the year, um, the roster freeze is October 10th and on October 10th as well um, free agents can begin negotiations so sweet so we won't have to worry about for a while but just kind of throwing that out there yeah tight tight sounds good the uh well guys the off season's in full swing here expansion drafts gonna break some teams hearts later this week um you know and then we're 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 on our way to the NWSL draft, and maybe we'll make some signings here and there. Who the hell knows? It's just this sport is just weird and breaks hearts. I imagine once the expansion draft is done, we're going to start to see some signings because that's when everybody already has everything solidified. Free agents, I think, will start signing with yeah. some teams. So hopefully, we'll get some good news. We'll see what happens. But. Cool. Well, folks, thanks so much for being here. Um, as always, we'll uh, uh, if we absolutely need to be here next week, we will. If not, we'll probably uh, catch you after Christmas. So happy holidays to you and yours if we don't uh, talk to you then. Um, if you want to hit us up on, on Twitter, you got questions, comments, praise, neg- keep that negative stuff to yourself. 
but <laughs> package it in a nice way. How about that? Yeah, there you go. Nice Sprinkle it with positivity and uh, it goes down well. Uh, no other pod on Twitter or X uh, at Dan Kuzer at Chris Wright 21. Hit us up on uh, on Gmail. No other pod at gmail.com. Um, Instagram as well, all the socials. So for Chris, I'm Daniel and uh, Snoochie Boochies. We love you. Bye bye.